With the latest Marvel Studios movie ready to take us on a swashbuckling space adventure, it's time for a geek crash course on the Guardians of the Galaxy. The Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, they're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh-huh. Because when you say it's slow, that totally helps. I know. While the majority of Marvel Comics adventures take place on Earth, there's also the Marvel Cosmic line, featuring the adventures of various spacefaring heroes and alien races, including the Guardians of the Galaxy. The Guardians act as defenders of Earth's galaxy. The original 1969 Guardians of the Galaxy were a sci-fi super team from the 31st century of a parallel Marvel universe. The upcoming movie, however, is inspired by the retooled 2008 Annihilation story from the modern reboot of the comics. The Guardians we'll be seeing in the movie include Peter Quill, who's a half-alien, half-human called the Star-Lord. He's basically an intergalactic policeman. He's the leader of the Guardians and assembles the team. Gamora is the last of her alien species. She's extremely proficient in martial arts, earning her the title the deadliest woman in the whole galaxy. And she was cybernetically enhanced by Batty Thanos to have superhuman abilities. Drax the Destroyer was born human Arthur Douglas, whose family was killed by Thanos and his soul was placed in a new, more powerful body, making him Drax the Destroyer. Originally he could fly and shoot energy blasts from his hands, but he has since lost those abilities and is now simply super strong and has a preference for knives as his fighting weapon. Rocket Raccoon is a walking, talking, fuzzy raccoon who happens to be a brilliant strategist and tactician. So basically, he has all the talents of your standard trash-trawling Earth raccoon, except he has OCD, he's an excellent marksman, and a skilled starship pilot. Groot is an alien plant creature that looks like a giant tree. He eats wood to regenerate and repair himself, which is a little cannibalistic, yeah. He can control other trees and, unlike pretty much every other tree in the universe, is flame retardant. He's highly intelligent, but only ever speaks in permutations of the phrase, I am Groot. When creating the character of Star-Lord, writer Steve Englehart envisioned the character following a more astrologically inspired story, with his original origin involving a planetary alignment with mystical connotations. Englehart left Marvel before he could enact his apparently epic plan. Also important is Thanos. Although not appearing in the movie as far as we know, he's important to the overall mythology of the Guardians because he's the adopted father of Gamora, the murderer of Drax's family, and a mass murdering sociopath obsessed with courting the embodiment of death by committing atrocities in her name. What a romantic. He's the best. He's super strong, telekinetic, and can teleport, so fighting him is generally kind of tough. The big bads of the movie are the trio of Ronan the Accuser, a member of the alien Kree race and their supreme accuser. He's essentially judge, jury, and executioner all in one package, and he holds the universal weapon, which can basically do anything. Fire energy blasts, alter gravity, transmute matter, and way, way more. Add to that a powered, strength-enhancing armor equipped with invisibility and the power to put anyone in suspended animation, and Ronan is definitely going to be a major threat to the Guardians. Nebula is a villainous space pirate slash mercenary, as well as the apparent granddaughter of Thanos. Seeing as Karen Gillan shaved her head for the part, the film Nebula is likely the version after her conversion into a cyborg with robotic left eye, arm, and shoulder. Korath is a cybergeneticist and founder of the Pursuer Project, designed to create super soldiers through a combination of cybernetic implants and genetic engineering, who use the process on himself to become a pursuer. As a pursuer, Korath has abilities including super strength and super durability. He can also locate people psionically by tracing their brain patterns. He's on Ronan's team, so expect him to be a bit of a problem for the Guardians. There's also the Collector, an elder of the universe, a race of highly evolved super beings imbued with the power primordial. The power primordial is the energy left over from the creation of the universe, which allows the Collector near limitless abilities, including being able to foresee the future, the ability to change his size and density, and energy blasts. The Collector is obsessed with collecting rare artifacts from a wide range of alien cultures. The more unique, the more valuable. The Collector is generally a villain in the comics, but his allegiances in the movie are as yet undefined. Zzzz. What's happening? I don't like this. I'm psionically locating you. I'm right here. In the Ultimate Comics, a line of alternate continuity titles, Thanos is the father of Ronan the Accuser. 
As far as homework, we recommend checking out the recently relaunched Guardians of the Galaxy title, which was designed to be new reader friendly. If you want to dig a bit deeper into the modern Guardians team, check out the Annihilation miniseries, which relaunched the Marvel Cosmic line. The Annihilation story continued through a series of other miniseries and titles that built a really interesting world out of the previously disparate Marvel Cosmic characters, so those stories are well worth checking out too if you're into it. There aren't a lot of adaptations featuring the Modern Guardians team, but one standout is the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes episode Michael Korvac, which featured the team coming to Earth to track a dangerous threat to the galaxy. Also, the upcoming movie looks like it's going to be a rollicking, swashbuckling space adventure with what appears to be a good dose of comedy. We'll preemptively say, go see it. In the modern Guardians of the Galaxy comics, the team has added Iron Man to their ranks. No word on if the movie Tony Stark will head into space, but we can dream. Which do you prefer, wisecracking raccoon or linguistically limited tree? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe for more Geek Crash Course. Until next week, if you have any questions, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, geekcrashcourse.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Geek Crash I am Crash Groot. Gro Groot. Groot Crash Course. I am Groot. You're, you're Groot? Groot. I got you a friend. Groot. G Groot. 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 No, I'm, but I'm, that's, you're correct. That's where I am. I found him. She, she found, that's. He's here. Mm.